Sing it. 
Praise you, Lord. Come on, somebody praise him.
that song. Isn't that just beautiful? Yeah, give the Lord a good hand. Hallelujah. How many of you got a song that will never never end? Amen from the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to go to prayer this morning, and I want to invite our pastors and our deacons forward, and we're going to pray for those that have a need in your life today. If you're here today and you want someone to agree with you in prayer, I invite you to come on forward right now, and our pastors and our leaders will pray for you this morning. Doesn't matter if, you, if this is your first time here, come on forward and we'll pray for you this morning. How many of you believe in miracles? Amen. You know, sometimes you just need somebody to agree with you. So come on forward and whatever need you have in your life, and they'll pray with you th uh, this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for your grace and your mercy. Lord, that song is, just rings true to our heart, God. Lord, for 10,000 years, forevermore, Lord, we're going to praise you. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace in our lives. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift our hands and thank him for another minute. Lord, I lift my hands and surrender to you. Lord, I thank you, God, for your goodness to me and my family. Lord, I thank you, oh God, that you're a great God. You're full of mercy and kindness and love. We thank you today, God, that you're here to meet us, Lord, to help us, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're ready to forgive and you're ready to help and you're ready to strengthen, Lord, because that's the kind of God that you are. We thank you for your character. We thank you for your love and your patience. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you that you're an all-powerful God, almighty God. I thank you, God, that you're present everywhere. Everywhere I go, whatever I do, Lord, your presence is there. And we thank you for that this morning in Jesus' name. Now begin to pray the will of God over your life. Just lay your hand on your heart. Pray, pray God's will over your life. Father, we pray your will to be done in our lives today, God, in Jesus' name. Nothing but your will for me, Lord. Lord, I pray, oh God, that I shall follow you, Lord, all the days of my life, and I shall serve you. Lord, I pray your will shall be done, God, in my life, Lord. Lord, amid, in the midst of my problems, in the midst of all the things that are going on in my life, I say today, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in my life and in my family in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to join hands with your family or for those with, you're with today. Let's begin to pray for one another. Father, we pray for one another today. Lord, I pray for that one on my right. I pray for that one on my left. Lord, I pray the will of God to be done in their lives. I thank you for the favor of God. Hallelujah. Come on, just pray over them. Uh, just pray a mighty prayer over their life. I pray blessing and the goodness of God over your life today. I pray that you shall be healed. I pray that you will walk in the, in the understanding of the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. And I pray you shall be blessed today. In Jesus' name, I rebuke the enemy off you. I rebuke any attack of the devil off your life. And I loose your power and your anointing upon your life today. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for your presence today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's pray for our country right now. Father, we pray for our president. President Obama, we pray for our leaders, Lord, of our land. God, that you'll help them. You'll speak to them, God. You'll help them, God, to lead this nation, God. Lord, let them listen to you. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Let them make good decisions and righteous decisions. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray, oh God, that you'll have mercy upon America and help America, God, to be great, Lord, we pray. Great again in Jesus' name. We pray for our city. Come on, let's stretch our hands towards our city. Father, we pray for Mayor Fisher today. We pray for the leaders of our city, God, that you'll help them and bless them. We pray for those, Lord, in the police department, in the fire department, God, in every area of our city. In Jesus' name, help them and bless them. Let this be a city of peace. Let the favor of God be upon our leaders in our city here, we pray. In Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your help in our lives. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, how many of you know that sometimes we have to just rebuke the devil? You know, it's almost like you just had, had enough. And maybe you're one of those people today, you've just had enough. Anybody can relate to that? 
and you just got to rebuke the devil off your life. Let's do that right now. Any attack of the enemy, if you're under an attack right now, just, just rebuke him in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we take authority over the devil. We take authority in the name of Jesus over every, every attack of the enemy, whether it's upon our body or upon our family. We rebuke you. We tell you, get out of our life. Get out of our church. Get out of our city in Jesus' name. We stand upon the authority of the name of Jesus today, Lord. We know who you are. We know that you are the God of mercy and grace and strength. And we stand today. We loose your power and your anointing upon our lives to serve you with all of our heart and all of our mind. In Jesus' name. I want you to lay your hand on your heart one more time. I want you to pray this out loud. Pray it real loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I give you permission to work in my life. In every area, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I ask you today to work in my life, to work in my family. Make me a blessing to everyone I'm around in Jesus' name because you are my Lord, you are my God, and you are my King in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's put our hands together and thank him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you appreciate this worship team up here? Give them a good hand, too. They're awesome. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Ushers, if you would come at this time, we're going to serve our communion. God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord. Brother Miller's my rock every Sunday morning. Praise God. Thinking this morning, 73 years ago this month, the Lord baptized me with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. He's just as real today as he ever was. In fact, I know him better today than I did yesterday. Some of the old saints in the church would come to me and say, Now, Brother Howard, you need to ask the Lord to give you the gift of healing or the gift of miracles. It's always a big showy gift they wanted. <laughs> I said, Oh, I, I need the gift of wisdom and knowledge. I'm kind of like the fellow that was. Two men decided they were going to build a garage, and they were rookies. They didn't know much about building. One of them was nailing the shingles on the side the siding, and, and he was, he'd take a nail out and look at it and hammer it in, take another nail out and look at it and throw it away, take another nail out and hammer it in, another one throw it away. The other guy said, Kevin, why are you throwing all our nails away? He said, well, I look at them, and they got the port on the wrong end. He said, well, you dummy, those are for the other side. <laughs> So I felt kind of like that when, when I received the Holy Ghost. I was just a dumb little 12-year-old boy. And I said, oh, God, give me wisdom and give me knowledge. This morning, he is our strength. I thank you for Calvary today. What a change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Praise the Lord. We're taking communion simply because of Calvary, remembering the blood that was shed for us. Let us pray. Father, thank you this morning. You loved us so much. You sent your son, and he died for us. We love you. We appreciate all the great gifts of your love. We pray this morning that Calvary will make become more real to each and every one of us. We keep our eyes on your soon return. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us eat. Let us drink. Hello church, welcome to ENN. My name is Matt Tidwell. I am the student pastor here at Evangel. We'd like to take a moment and break in the service and welcome all of our first time guests. If this is your first time or first time in a long time, we wanna thank you for joining us. We hope you have a great time here at Evangel at all of our services. We have many things or events that we'd like to share with you. Join Pastor Bob Rogers Sunday, September 8th at the 5 p.m. service for a special time of prayer and intercession. 
If you're in the need of healing or have a family member that you're praying for to be saved, attend this prayer and impartation service Sunday night, September 8th at 5 p.m. at the Biltown Road Campus. Join Pastors Bob and Margaret Rogers this fall for a trip of a lifetime to Israel. See the sights of the Holy Land as you walk where Jesus walked and experience the Bible as never before as it comes alive all around you. Then be baptized in the Jordan River. This trip includes airfare, food, and lodging along with a guided tour and many extras. Make a point today to call the number on the screen for more information on this trip of a lifetime to the Holy Land. Join with Dr. Bob and Margaret Rogers as they celebrate their 25th year as senior pastors at Evangel World Prayer Center at the Black and White Gala on Monday, November 4th, 2013 at the Marriott Louisville downtown. This elegant formal gala will be a luxurious evening of dining, entertainment, and featuring a silent auction to benefit the Lord's Kitchen. For more information on this event or to purchase your tickets, visit worldprayercenter.org forward slash gala. Reserve your tickets before October 1st and receive a special preferred discounted price. 88.5 88.5 WJIE and CGIA present the first annual performing arts competition September 13th and 14th at the Evangel World Prayer Conference Center. Join with youth from around America as they compete for prizes in many creative arts competitions. Space is running out in many areas, so register you or your group today. Visit pam.cgia.us for more information. The Red and Blue Tailgate Party is happening at Evangel on the grounds at the Miners Lane Campus on Thursday night, September 12th at 7 p.m. Gear up for the UofL UK football game that Saturday with this annual church event. There'll be games, inflatables, and live music. Bring your grill and food and tailgate with us. All the fun starts at 7 p.m. on the 12th. Don't miss it. exciting events coming out. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's so good to see each and every one of you this morning. We so appreciate you being here, coming out to fellowship with us. And we believe that God's got something powerful in store for you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we especially like to welcome our guest. If this is your first time with us or possibly first time in a long time, we'd simply like to acknowledge you and welcome you to our service. So if you're a guest, may I see your hand? We have a gift brochure we'd like to place in your hands. Praise the Lord. Keep your hands raised right back over there. Our ushers have this gift bag they're going to place in your hands and right back over here. All right. Don't be shy. It's good. Got something we want to bless you with. Amen. Well, let's give our guest a round of applause. Thank you for coming out with us this morning. We don't believe you're here by accident or by mistake, but in God's divine province. Amen. And so if you wouldn't mind, look through there. There's several items we have uh, made available for you. And there's also a card there. If you wouldn't mind to fill that out. Place that in the offering when we receive it here just a few moments. We'd appreciate that very, very much. Well, I want to share just a few quick announcements with you this morning, kind of elaborate on a few that you just saw. I want to remind everyone on Tuesday mornings at 8 a.m. at our Miners Lane Prayer Chapel, we have a wonderful prayer meeting. Our pastor's there, our staff is there, and it's a powerful, dynamic time. And I want to encourage you, if at all possible, come out and be a part of that. And then, of course, Monday through Friday at both locations, we have some powerful times of prayer at 6 a.m. And so it's a great way to start your day. And then next Sunday evening at 5 p.m. at here in the Billtown Road campus, we're going to be having water baptisms on the 1st. And so I want to encourage you to, you know, if you've not been baptized, come out and get baptized. It's going to be a great experience for you for the glory of God. And then I want our congregation just to be aware of, we have many wonderful ministry opportunities available. We've just launched 20 new intercessory prayer groups, and we have the schedule and times of those prayer meetings out in the foyer there on the information desk. I want to encourage you to pick one of those that would fit your schedule and uh, just come out and support these prayer groups. And we're believing God for a thousand intercessors for the glory of God. Amen. And we also have a wonderful prison ministry, and they're in need of some volunteers to help them. Our, our, uh, prayer line and and so great ministries that we have opportunities for everyone here to get plugged in and do something for God amen amen how many are doing something for God all right now what's wrong with the rest of you amen I know you're going all we're all going to work together and get a big job done for God amen well at this time let's welcome our senior pastor Dr. Bob Rogers let's let him know how much we love him amen 
Praise the Lord. Um, how many like your new parking lot? Amen. And uh, hallelujah for that. Actually, it was $23,000. And uh, so praise God. I think if we had waited, it'd probably been close to 30000 if you'd waited till the spring. But uh, we, we have uh, people pledged, and, and so we, we're paying for it cash. Amen. And so, hallelujah. If, um, if you pledged, uh, we're going to have to pay it this week, so I just uh, share that with you. But, uh, but it looks really, really wonderful. Uh, this past week, I went to Dallas, Texas, and uh, we're on the, I'm on the board of the SUM School of Urban Ministries, which we have a, an extension right here on our campus. And you can go to a college that's fully accredited, a school that uh, you can get Pell Grants, you can get loans from the government just like you could at the University of Louisville or University of Kentucky, but you can graduate in three years. And we have uh, applied for a, a school. It was the school that D.L. Moody built in uh, way it's in Massachusetts. It has 32 buildings there. Uh, when they wrote the song, Blessed Assurance, they wrote that right there on that campus. Uh, until just two years ago, it was uh, used as an elite girls school. And those girls, when they would graduate, they could go to any university that uh, they would choose. It cost $58,000 to attend that school. It has 32 buildings, almost 200 acres. And the Green family, who have Hobby Lobby, they bought that school. And so they wanted to give it to a Christian school, a school that would preach Jesus. And 110 universities and colleges applied for that school. And now they're down to their final 10. And we're one of those schools. And so hallelujah, praise God. Uh, we uh, had gone up there to look at the school, and it was actually during the time of fasting that the Lord spoke to me. And I called the president of the uh, college, and I told him what God said, and he laughed at me. Presently, their campus is in Oakland, California, and, and I told him, I said, well, God told me that he was going to give us that school. And he laughed at me. And then a prophet came into that school about a month later and said, uh, God spoke to me that he was going to give us, give you that school up there. And so he called me and he wasn't laughing then. But I really believe it is a real answer to prayer. And the school, the school has uh, uh, these, these buildings are as spectacular as any buildings anywhere on any campus. We had a engineer come uh, who did all the engineering for Boston College and a lot of the universities uh, up in the Boston area. And he said you could take this school and you could put it right in the middle of Harvard's campus and just think it's just right a, a part of that, uh, of that school. But I believe God is going to send revival to America. And for that revival to come, it has to come to the East Coast. And you take the population of America. The fact is, uh, half of the population of North America is within a 300-mile driving range of Buffalo, New York. So you take 300 miles around Buffalo, New York, and you have over half of the population of North America. You have New York City. You have Cleveland. You have Chicago. You have all the eastern cities. And God has to send a revival in the name of the Lord. We live in the flyover zone. They uh, have the East Coast and the liberals control the West Coast. And we just, we're the flyover zone. We're the, we're the zone that doesn't count. But I believe that we can make a difference in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so our semester is beginning here, uh, I think just in a week or so. And if you are interested, you need to speak to Pastor Kevin Miller, 
but you can actually go to school right here and uh, you can it's it's actually uh, it's about two days a week and they have it fixed where you you can graduate in three years and so it's a tremendous tremendous program amen I want us all to stand everybody standing I want you to say with me I love to give to the work of God. How many really love to give to God's work? And when we give to God, it opens the doors for miracles to happen to us. The Bible says when you bring your tithes into the storehouse, he says, prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not pour you out a blessing that you, will not, you cannot contain. And he said he would open the windows of heaven. Say, open the open heavens. You know, when we talk about giving and talking about an open heaven, we're talking about how God will hear our prayers. And there's an open heaven. Our God is answering our prayers. And so when we give our tithe, he said, I'll open the windows of heaven. Or it's an open heaven for God to hear you and for God to do miracles. And a lot of times we come to our giving and we separate it from our praying and from our other religious activities. And we think, well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian. I love God. And now he, all, he wants, all he wants is my, our money. I'm real spiritual. I'm praying. I'm seeking the Lord. But now he's talking about money. But actually, it's all in the same thing. It's a part of our prayers. It's a part of our worship. In the book of Psalms, he says, remember all my offerings. Remember my giving. And he's talking about a prayer that he's offering unto God. So today as we give, we are focusing as our, bringing our tithe that God's opening the heavens to hear our prayers in the name of Jesus. Is uh, Steve Hume here today? Is Steve here? Uh, Steve, Steve's brother was very, very ill. And at the point of death and he, he came to me while I was taking the offering and he told me he said is there any way you could get over to see him and so um, I, I told uh, one of our pastors and brother Kevin Miller went over there and he prayed with him well the next day he passed and so sometimes we don't know how much time that we have and we, we utter a prayer God do something and then someone steps in and and uh, they're able to pray with them. My grandmother prayed for her son, Junior. She prayed that God would save Junior. And uh, when she passed, my dad promised her, he said, well, I'll, I'll pray for all the family. So every day he'd pray that his brother, Junior, would get saved. Well, Junior was fishing. He's fishing in Oklahoma. And he had a heart attack right out there on the lake in, the, in this fishing boat. By the time they got him to the hospital, he had died. And so at the funeral, my dad was talking to this fishing buddy. He said, you know, he said, I'd always pray that Junior would get saved. And he says, well, he said, well, we were taking him into the shore when he had that heart attack. He said, he, he was praying, God, forgive me of my sins. Lord, come into my life. And so when it comes to our offering time, I want you to focus that God's meeting you, that God is performing a miracle on your behalf. Uh, Sister Sample, uh, uh, how old was your mother again? 80 years old. She passed this week. And uh, our prayers are, are for you and your family. But God will do miracles right during the offering. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. I want you to turn your attention to our screens as we make this proclamation. Lord Jesus, I come into your house, not empty-handed, but bringing my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open to me. Blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain. The devourers rebuke for my sake. This year is a continuation of the Jubilee blessing. By faith, I have a better job, promotions, raises, bonuses, and benefits, business opportunities, sales, and commission increases inheritances, rebates, settlements, and checks in the mail. I expect favor, interest, royalties, and scholarships, gifts, surprises, and newfound monies. 
I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending. My bills are decreasing and my income is increasing. I have the anointing for blessings equipping me to be a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth. The favor of God's upon me and everything I put my hand to will prosper. I'm a cheerful giver, sowing in good ground that's bringing souls into the kingdom of God. And my God is supplying all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus, as I bring my tithes and I bring my offerings, may the heavens open. And may my prayers be received. And may quick answers and miraculous answers come forth in the name of Jesus. I declare my body's healed. All my family is saved. That you are meeting me financially in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, I'm blessed of the Lord. Amen. God bless you and God bless these ushers. going to pause just for a moment. I promise we'll return you to the service here in just a matter of minutes. But I want to remind you that you can call for prayer. The number is on your screen, 888-613-6080. If you're unable to call, you can send it in by email to prayer at worldprayercenter.org. We're believing God to meet you and to meet the need of your life. We serve a God who answers prayer. And he said in his word that we should call on him. We should ask that we would receive, seek that we would find, knock, and the door would be open. So there's many reminders. Make your requests known unto God is another verse in the scripture. So we're asking you to join with us in agreement according to Matthew 18, 19. And these partners will pray with you and believe God for your need to be met. So I encourage you to place that call. And let's believe God to do something great and mighty in your life today. Now, we're going to go back into the service, and we're going to believe God for something great. I want to encourage you to open your heart, get your Bible out so you can follow along with the preaching of the Word. And when prayer is, is lifted up, you join in that prayer. And again, if you need to call, give us a call, 888-613-6080. Eight zero. We're going to go back into the service now as it continues. Let's all stand, everybody standing. I want you to take your Bible and hold it up to the Lord. If you don't have a, your Bible, hold your hand up. But I want us to make this proclamation together. Say, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. 
I'm going to follow this book all of my life in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 15. And we're going to be reading from the book of Genesis in just a moment. But this month, the month of August, is the month of great answers to prayer. God gave that to me by a revelation of the Holy Spirit. And in a very uh, difficult time in my life, I prayed that God would give me a dream. And God would show me direction. And my wife laid her hands on me and prayed for me. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, I awoke And the phone rang, and it was a prophet of God. And he said to me, he said, you know, I I went to heaven. And I had a vision of heaven, and I met your dad in heaven. And your dad gave me a word for you. And that is, August is a month of great answers to prayer. And that month, God gave us a fabulous uh, miracle. Our church needed $600,000. And God gave it to us in one single month. And it came not through borrowing. It just came in the offerings. And so some of the greatest miracles of my life have happened in the month of August. When we were battling to get Channel 21, Margaret and I fasted for 18 days in the month of August. And it was uh, during August the FCC granted to us Channel 21. And so we are right now in a window of real miracles. And I was reading the month of August is the month of Elul, E-L-U-L. And it is the month that is they call the High Holy Month because there are two of their sacred feasts that take place right during this time. In the Jewish calendar, Uh, There's the Feast of Tabernacles and also Yom Kippur. That's when the high priest would enter into the most holy place and ask for the forgiveness of the sins of the people. So in this month, they uh, encourage the the Jewish people to have it as a month of forgiveness, where if you have ought against your brother, you need to make it right. You need to ask God to... Uh, humble you, you humble yourself, and you pray. And one of the rabbis wrote that this is the month of the greatest answers of prayer in the whole calendar. Well, I really believe that God will anoint us to have the greatest answers to prayer that we've ever had. That doesn't mean that God doesn't answer prayer in January or February. I believe God answers prayer 24 hours a day seven days a week, 365 days a year. But there are seasons for great miracles. There are seasons when Isaacs are born. And this is a season for you to draw close to God and believe the Lord for the greatest miracles that uh, you've ever faced in your life. When it comes to the promises of God, the most fabulous promises in the Bible are connected with prayer. In Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, Call on me, and I will answer thee, and I'll show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not of. And it indicates that if you hadn't prayed, you would have never seen these great and mighty things come to pass in your life. In John 15, 7, it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, it says, Whatsoever things you desire, When you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In John chapter 16, beginning in verse 23, it says, Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, that will he do. He said, Unto now you've asked nothing in my name, but ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Your joy may be full. Say that with me. Your joy may be full. There are things that money can buy. But there are some things that you can never get. You can't get your joy through money. You can have all the money you could ever spend and have a son or daughter on drugs. And there's always an emptiness in your life. You can have uh, enough money to own a hospital, and yet you have cancer, and your life will be destroyed. And only God can give you the joy 
and it comes through answers to prayer. Can I hear an amen? amen? Well, the first time you ever read about a prayer being answered or a prayer even being made is found in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 15. And it's where Abraham prayed that God would give him a child. And I want you to look with me in this, in this chapter because there is what we call the law of first mention. And that is when something is mentioned for the first time, there are additional details that are given that at other times where, for instance, in this case, prayers were made, it doesn't give all the steps, but yet those steps are still included. It's all a part of the prayer pattern and what happens when people begin to pray. But it's spelled out in this chapter. And I, I want us to look at what I call the, the, the law of prayer. It begins and it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, for I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. The first component of a prayer, a prayer that was prayed by Abraham that was answered, a prayer that's prayed by each of us, has to be based upon the promises of God. And the promise of God in this case, I am thy shield, I am thy protection. The first time that this was used in the Hebrew language, it meant like a rock that was rolled over a cave, that would seal the cave, that would protect you from wild animals or from elements. And when God says he is your shield, he's saying he is placing his hand over you that no weapon formed against you will prosper. He said, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. When you come to God, he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder of those that will diligently seek the Lord. So our, our prayers have to be based upon the promises of God. If your prayer is not based on what God's promised to do for you, then you shouldn't be praying that prayer. But when you have the promise and the Word of God to back up what you're praying for, then you have authority in the name of Jesus. Sometimes it's good to even pray the promises, to pray the Scriptures. One year, I prayed the Bible through. I just didn't read it through. I prayed it through. It's, it's hard to pray those genealogies, but there are a lot of the Word of God that you can pray. Uh, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Father, I want to thank you that you're my shepherd. Lord, as a shepherd, you are to lead us and you are to guide us. And Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to direct me. Lord, you said you are my shepherd and I shall not want. I thank you, Father, that you are providing for all of our needs. Lord, you see these needs that we're facing, and I call the money in. I call the provision in, in the name of Jesus. Well, what am I doing? I'm praying the Word of God. It's called literally a positional prayer, that you place yourself in that position, the first person of those promises of God, and you stand on those promises, and you proclaim the miracles of God are coming your way. Can I hear an amen? Now, all of God's Word is anointed. All of it's anointed. Even the, even the, the these and the thous are, are anointed in the name of Jesus. And it's called the Logos. It's called the written Word of God. But there's sometimes when you read that passage that it just jumps out of the pages. And at that time, at that point, it's called the Rhema Word of God or the spoken Word of God because God is speaking to you individually. Now, it's the living Word of God. It's, it's alive and it's full of power. And as it's living, sometimes it will manifest itself to you. And when it does, when it speaks to you, and that rhema Word of God comes to you, it's your personal promise that God's going to bring you that miracle. It's, a, it, it's the personal promise that God's going to heal you that God's going to bring the finances into your life, into your family. And so you stand on the Word of God, and it's based on the promises of God. In verse 2, and it says, And Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? 
And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one, in my, uh, one born in my house is mine heir. So he begins to pray. And this comes the heart of the prayer. First, we base our prayers on the promises of God, and then we pray. We ask. He prayed that God would give him a child. Now, when it comes to prayer, sometimes people will just begin to worship God. And they'll worship the Lord the whole, their whole uh, time uh, in their prayer time. They'll just worship God. And that's wonderful. There are other times where you meditate on the Word of God. You sit and you read the Bible and you just meditate on the promises of God. You, you kind of write some things down. But all of that is wonderful and a part of our demo devotions and in coming into God's presence. But when it comes down to, being, to, to praying, praying, the definition is to ask. That's what it means. It doesn't mean we're not, we're not to meditate, but meditation is not prayer. The Bible says, and in his law doth, I me doth he meditate day and night. He meditated, but it, it's not prayer. Worshiping is wonderful, but it's not prayer. It gets you into the presence of God. And once you get into pre the presence of God, it's time to do business. It's time to ask. And so Jesus defined what prayer meant. In Matthew 7, 7, he says, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. To, to ask is to pray. You take the A from ask, the S from seek, and the K from knock, and it still spells ask. And that's what prayer is. It's coming boldly before the throne room of God and making our petitions known unto the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. And so he began, to, he began to ask. He began to ask very definitely. Now, usually a prayer that is not definite is not a prayer that's not, it's not urgent. And when you pray, you need to pray very definitely. There was a Lady, she was praying her 16-year-old son would get saved. Lord, save him. You save him. Lord, you save him. But what happened one night, he was involved in a car accident. And they rushed him to the hospital, and they didn't know if he would live or not. And then she really got, she really got down to business. Lord, I've got to have my son saved now. Lord, he needs to come to you now. And there at the hospital, that boy gave his heart to God, and then later God, God healed him, and God spared his life. But we have to get very definite in our prayers unto the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. And so it says this, and Abram, he prayed. He made his prayer. And then in verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he shall come forth out of thine own bowels, and shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Now look to the heavens and tell the stars, and if thou be able to number them. He said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. He showed him the stars. And when you get into the Middle East, you don't have the humidity that you have here in North America. This is a land of lakes and a land of rivers. But in that part of the world, it's desert. And when you find water, it's very, very valuable. So you don't have the humidity. And when you look to the stars, it looks like there's twice as many stars as there is in this part of the world. And as he looked to the stars, it seemed like every one of those stars changed to the face of a little boy. And they begin to cry, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. It was so real to him that every time he'd go out, he'd look to the stars and see those stars. It was a reminder that God's going to give him children and those children are going to be mighty. And not only are they going to be numerous as the stars, the stars are at 
in a supernatural realm. They are not ruled by the atmosphere of planet Earth. And when we understand that, that our seed and our lives through Christ, we're not ruled by the laws of man. We have supernatural laws, the laws of faith, the, the laws of God's Word. And we can rise higher than anyone else through standing on God's Word. And so when he saw that, then God showed him the sands of the, the earth. And he says, your seed shall be as the sands of the earth. You know, the sand, you can't number the sand. But also the sand is what we walk on. If we'll honor God, our seed will be as the stars. But if your seed doesn't honor God, they'll be trampled under by the foot of man. And that's what happens, what has happened in the, in the Jewish history. When they honored God, they ruled the world. When they didn't honor God, the Romans came in. In one year, in 70 A.D., the Romans killed one million Jews. And it was during that time, the Christians in Israel, the Christians that were there in Jerusalem, not a one was killed. Jesus said, when you, when you look to the hills and they are surrounding, the armies are surrounding uh, Israel, he said, you are to flee to the mountains. But what happened was the Romans came in in 70 A.D. and they surrounded Jerusalem. He had, uh, Titus had an army of over 100,000 Roman soldiers. And they began to siege they began to siege uh, Jerusalem. But then something happened in Rome and they recalled the troops. So they pulled out of Jerusalem and they went back to Caesarea, the port. And when the Jews began to rejoice and they began to say, well, you know, God has heard our prayers and we've been delivered. But the Christians, they said that it is time. This is a sign to us that we must flee. This was the prophecy in the words of Christ. And they fled Jerusalem. So then the Roman soldiers, when they got word from Rome, everything was all right, they headed back up to Jerusalem and they took the city and they killed every Jewish person in that town. The fact is they had a very elaborate sewage system. And many of the Jewish people, they got into the sewers and they hid in the sewer system. And the Romans, they poured tar, they poured things into the sewer system, and they smoked them out, and the city smelled so bad, and it stunk for, for over a year. You couldn't even stand the stench of Jerusalem. But God spared his people. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so there is the prayer. And then the Bible says, he believed God. To believe God shows something that you do on your behalf that is an action, uh, an action step that you take. I read the story of the fellow who was the president of Wheaton University. His name was Dr. Blanchard, and he wrote a book. And he told the story about a lady who had interceded for her husband. Her husband had worked for the railroad. He was an engineer. And he become very ill. He lived in Philadelphia. And he was a big man, and he lost weight down to almost 100 pounds, and he died. And when the doctor told her that her husband had died, she said, he can't die. I prayed and asked God to save him before he died, and he can't die without getting saved. And so she went in to where he lay. And there were other doctors there, and they, they confirmed, yes, he's dead. She says, well, I want to I wanna stay in here and pray. So she knelt down and began to pray, and she, after a while, her knees began to hurt on that concrete floor, and they brought a pillow. And she prayed for one hour. She prayed for three hours. She prayed for 10 hours. She didn't get off her knees. On the 13th hour, her husband opened his eyes. 
And she uh, began to talk to him. And he, uh, he so told how he had, he had seen heaven. And uh, she prayed with him. And then she asked him, said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to go home. And so they told the doctors, they said, oh, no, you can't go home. He said, you'll die. It, it'll be a suicide. He said, well, he already died. And uh, so he, he went home. And he gained, he started gaining weight, gained over, he weighed over 246 pounds when he finally passed. Thank God for the, for the power of prayer. I was fasting. I was on this 21-day fast. And at that, in those days, we had a prayer mountain. And I was out of prayer mountain, and I was praying, and suddenly the Lord spoke to me to go see a man in our church. His name was Carl. And he was at the Audubon Hospital. And I just felt so compelled to, to go see him. And so there was a fellow with me. He said, where are you going? I said, well, I just feel like God wants me to go to the hospital. So I drove to the Audubon Hospital and I went up uh, on the sixth floor where he was staying. And I walked into the room and the nurse was there and she said, are you a part of the family? I said, I'm his pastor. I said, what's, what's happening? He said, he, he just died. And we've called the family. So I went there in the room, and I just began to worship the Lord. I said, now, Lord, I know you called me here. I know you, you sent me here. And, Lord, uh, I, I was too late. And while I'm praying there, the presence of the Lord filled that room so much, and suddenly Carl opened his eyes. He said, Pastor, he said, I've been to heaven. And I said, well, we're glad to have you back. Praise God. And, and while we're talking, suddenly his daughter came into the room. She uh, lived in LaGrange. And then his wife came into the room. And then uh, the son got there. And there had been a real division in their family. And none of the kids were saved. His wife was a very devout Christian. And they had prayed that God would save those kids. And so he began to tell about heaven. He began to tell about the angels. And so I, I told them, I said, you know, God brought him back so this family could be healed and this family could come to Christ. And all those kids, they prayed the sinner's prayer. I mean, we were all crying. It was, it was really a, a tremendous thing. Well, he went home the next day and he, he lived for about a month. He came to church that Sunday. And then he uh, said, you know, God has really done a work in our family. And uh, he said, I want you to, he said, I don't, something's not right. Take me to the hospital. And while they were sitting there in the waiting room, he passed and went on to be with the Lord. But God had saved his whole family. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> and so there's the promise. You find that promise in God's word. And then you begin to ask. And then you begin to believe God. There's a peace that God has heard my prayer. And then what happens is there's opposition that takes place. In verse 7, after he believed God and God counted it to him for, for righteousness, it says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land. And he said, Lord, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said, take me a heifer, a she-goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So he took these different animals, and he cut the animals in half. He didn't uh, divide the birds, but he put one half on one side and one on the other. And in verse 11, and when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. He set a sacrifice before God, and when he did, opposition came. The fowls came. The buzzards came. The devils came. Did you know if you're believing God for great miracles, the devil's not just going to step back and just let you waltz right in and get your miracle without having some opposition. And what we have to understand many times we're facing demons. When you're praying for your kids or you're praying for your business or you're praying 
uh, for a situation, you're coming against strongholds. You're coming against demonic powers. I was down in Texas and I was preaching there and uh, this uh, pastor's wife, her husband was gone and Margaret and I were there and she said, would you go pray for my son? Said, uh, he, he married this girl and this, this girl's mother was a witch. And uh, this girl was really good looking. And I say good looking, she probably wasn't that good looking. She's just real sexual. Uh, and uh, he had gotten involved in her and they'd gotten married. But when he married her, every evil thing you could imagine began to happen to him. And he'd gotten into alcohol and the drugs. And I remember I went over to pray for him. And I began to talk to him. And then these demons began to manifest. I thought he was going to kill me. He picked me up with one hand and put me against the wall and told me he was going to kill me. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to kill me. But I thought he was. I thought he was going to kill me. He took his fist and he, as he swung at the last minute, he hit the wall and that plaster, he put a hole in that plaster. He picked up a chair. He said, I'm going to break this chair over your head. And I said, no, you're not going to break that chair over my head. And he took that chair and he, at the last minute, he hit the ground beside me and smashed that chair in pieces. And I knew I was facing demons. And I bind you in the name of Jesus. I put that, put that down in Jesus' name. And finally, it, it broke. He um, ended up, that, that wife, that, he ended up leaving her. And uh, later, he met a wonderful Christian lady. Today, they have grandchildren. Uh, he's serving God. God's blessed him. But for that battle to be won, it had to be won through powers over demons. And sometimes we don't recognize that demons get a hold of our kids. Demons get a hold of our families. Get, demons get, get their, their grip into family members. And they do it many times sexually. You know, one of the, one of the great lies that has been, we've been exposed to, has been the lies uh, of homosexuality, that everything's okay. And there's this gene, this gene that you're born with, that's a homosexual gene. You know, it's a mystery gene. We've never found that gene. It's, it's something where people who get involved in sin, they want an excuse for doing uh, and living that type of lifestyle so here come these mystery genes. These genes, this, you were born that way. Well, you weren't born that way. Those are demons of lust. Those are demonic powers. And they can be broken in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of God. I was at an all-night prayer meeting one night, and a fellow came in there, and he was, he was weeping. And I remember I went over, and I started praying for him. And uh, he said, Pastor, he said, I, I want to tell you something. He said, I'm, I'm involved in homosexuality. He said, the fact is, I just came here from, from uh, Cherokee Park. And I was up there by that, by that circle, and there were, uh, I had two people up there that I had encounters with tonight. And he said, I, I want to kill myself. He said, I've had this uh, issue since I was 12 years of age. He said, I had a family member that raped me. And then I got into this kind of lifestyle. And he said, uh, if my wife knew about it, she would leave me in a heartbeat. He had two boys. And he said, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, let me pray for you. And I began to pray for him. And I said, now, what I want you to do is fast Go on this fast for 21 days. Now, it's an amazing thing about people who when you talk to them about fasting, none of them can fast. There's always a reason they can't fast. There's a physical problem or there's this problem or their work and so forth. But when they get desperate, it's amazing what you can do. And so he went on a, this 21-day fast and God totally 100% delivered this man. 
And uh, hallelujah. God totally delivered him. And I remember I was talking with him about six months later. He said, Pastor, he said, it's just like I'm a new person. And he said, I would like to do something for God. He said, but I've never felt I could do that because of my past. I said, well, um, I, I believe that God, do, God can use you. So he and his wife got into, uh, involved in a prayer group. And they became, became leaders of a couple's prayer group. And he stayed in our church for probably an, another two years. And then he got transferred out west. And God gave him a tremendous job. He became the, the uh, administrator of a hospital. But God blessed him and totally changed him but what he had been battling was demons. And demons blind your eyes. They blind your eyes so you don't even think it's demons. But they are demonic powers. And so many times when you pray, you have to, we, we wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against demonic powers in the name of Jesus. And there was opposition. There are oppositions to your prayer. And sometimes when a, a devil shows up and he hits you in the face, many times you cower down and, and think all oh, hope is gone, but it's not. You rise up and hit him back in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so these buzzards came, but the Bible says he rose up and he drove them away. Hallelujah. And then in verse 13, it tells the fifth component, component of a prayer. It says, and he said unto him, Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs, and they shall serve them 400 years. And he begins to tell about, you're, you're going to have children, and your children are going to rise up, and they'll be mighty, but the day will come, they will go into bondage down in Egypt, and they'll be there for 400 years. And he's and so there are delays sometimes to your prayers being answered. You're praying that God will meet you. God speaks to you. You get the victory, <clears throat> but there's no manifestation of what you've been praying for. Well, that's where we have our prayers met, but we have them by faith. I'm healed by faith. I'm prospering by faith. God's met me by faith. And you hold fast to your profession of faith without wavering. God's healed me and faith is my title deed. Faith is, uh, is my proof that God has healed me. And that's where the, step, the walk of faith goes. And sometimes we walk by faith, not by sight. And our needs are met by faith until the manifestation comes. And when it comes... It's, uh, we don't have it by faith anymore. We have it by fact in the name of Jesus. And then in uh, the 17th verse, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. How many believe that would be kind of miraculous? Here he has those sacrifices laid out there. The buzzards come. He, he drives them away. God speaks to him. I'm going to answer your prayer, but your, your children are going to be in bondage 400 years. And before for all of this that I've spoken to you is going to come to pass, you're going to have some delays. And then in the midst of it, there comes this light, this smoking fire goes right through the midst of those sacrifices. Well, that's the miraculous of God. Those are the miracles that take place in the name of Jesus. My dad had a roommate in college. His name was Ralph Wilkerson. And I honestly thought Ralph Wilkerson was my uncle. I called him Uncle Ralph. So I was about 12 years old, and I learned he wasn't my uncle. But Ralph uh, went out to Melody Land, Melody Land Christian Center, and there he built a great church. It was Melody Land. He is the one that really introduced Benny Hinn. Nobody ever heard of Benny Hinn until Ralph Wilkerson came along. He is the guy who helped start Trinity Broadcasting, and he, he bought all the equipment and then turned it over to Paul Crouch. 
He is the fellow who brought Catherine Kuhlman out there to the West Coast. And he went to preach over in, over in uh, Taiwan. And on his way back, he was uh, at, a, uh, at the um, airport, and he had a heart attack. He had such a major heart attack, he passed out, he fell, he chipped a tooth, and he woke up in the hospital. And there was a doctor, and he says, uh, uh, Mr. Wilkerson, you've had a heart attack. You're going to die unless we do an immediate surgery, and we're going to do a heart transplant. And we've got everything ready. We've got a heart, and we're going to take you into surgery. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. He says, you're not going to do a heart transplant on me. He says, well, if you don't, you'll die. He said, I've got my own doctors in California, and I, I don't want you touching me. I, and the doctor became so offended, he left. And so Ralph lay there in that hospital bed, and he thought, well, what am I going to do? He said, God, you've got to speak to me. He said, and so he felt led that he needed to get out of that hospital. And so he got up, got, got his clothes, and, uh, and walked out of that hospital and, and went to a hotel. And he checked in. And so he's praying. He said, Lord, you've got to do a miracle in my life. And, and he began to think, well, who can I get to pray for me? I need somebody that will pray for me that will believe God for my healing. And God brought to his mind a fellow who had come to Melody Land out in California to his church and had... Uh, had done some movies in Hollywood and kind of was a B actor and had gone back to, to Taiwan. And he thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him. And so he somehow found this guy's phone number and invited him over to the hospital. He said, I'm real sick. You've got to come and pray for me. So the fellow gets over there and he said, now, I want you to pray that God will heal my heart. And he said, have you ever prayed for anybody to get healed? He said, no. I, he said, you never prayed for anybody to get healed? He said, do you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? He said, no, I don't. He said, oh, God, what am I going to do? So he led this fella into the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He laid hands on him, and he received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He said, now, I want to show you how to pray for the sick. And he shared with him how to pray for the sick. Now, I want you to lay hands on me and pray for me. So this fella laid hands, and he prayed for Ralph Wilkerson. And... Uh, so Ralph had called home, and when their plane landed at LAX, there was an ambulance that came right up there to the airplane, and they carried him out on a stretcher, and they took him to the hospital. They could not find anything wrong with his heart. They couldn't even find a, a, any malfunctions. He had that chipped tooth. He had to go to the dentist, and the Lord didn't heal his chipped tooth. But God healed his heart in the name of Jesus, and he's still alive today. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. And when you begin to follow God, you can depend upon the miraculous to take place. I want to read verse 18. And in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. God said, I've given this land to you, Abraham, and to your seed before Isaac was ever born. And God has ordained you to be a person of miracles. And God has ordained this very time that we are in right now for you to have your prayers met. Hallelujah to Jesus. I want to share a scripture with you in closing. It's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 20. And says, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, be removed to yonder place. It shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Say that with me. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. If you're here and you have had a prayer need that you have faced for a year or more and it has not been answered, I want you to stand to your feet right now. I want to pray for you. If you are facing a situation in your life that is impossible, that you've done everything in your effort and in your power to try to get this resolved and you cannot, 
I want you to stand because God deals in the impossible. Hallelujah. I want you to come down here today. Come right down here to the front. If you're here and you have felt like there's been almost a wall and when you've prayed, your prayers have not been able to penetrate that wall. I want you to come right down here today. I believe God is going to break that off of you in the name of Jesus. And as you come, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, you have a plan for my life. You have a purpose for my existence in the name of Jesus. Devil, I bind you. I bind you off my mind, off my spirit, off my family. In Jesus' name, everything you've spoken to me will not come to pass, but God shall do the opposite. You're a liar. In Jesus' name, God's given me power over poverty, over sickness, over every demon that would attack my family. I have power over that demon. And as I stand on God's Word, through prayer and fasting, nothing shall be impossible for me. In the name of Jesus, all my family shall be saved. I want you to begin to speak out loud your family members. Just the family members you want saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare my household shall be saved. Not one member of my family shall be lost in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah to the Lord. I want you to begin to pray for godly companions for your children in Jesus' name. If you say, well, it's too late. They're already married to a, a real devil. Well, pray that God will save that devil in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare all of our household shall marry godly people, righteous people in Jesus' name for your glory and for your honor. Now lay your hand right here on your chest. I come against sickness. I come against weakness. I come against generational curses that would cause your family to die before it's time. I break that off of you in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to diabetes and heart disease. I speak healing to cancer in the name of the Lord. I loose an anointing for you to lose weight in Jesus' name. For you get strong and healthy and beautiful for the glory of God. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, begin to pray for your body. Lord, we pray for our hearts and our lungs and the organs of our body. I pray for backs and hips and knees and feet in the name of Jesus Christ. I command God's strength to come into your body. I pray for your eyes and your ears. I pray for your mind. I pray for your sinuses from your head to your toes. Be healed and made whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now I want you to begin to pray for your finances. I want you to begin to ask God to open the windows of heaven. For God to begin to bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, I command God's blessings. I command God's blessings in the name of Jesus. I speak the blessings of the Lord to be released today in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Better jobs. Start your own business. To be blessed in everything that you put your hand to do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want you to look up here just a moment. This past week, we had a, a revival meeting. It was a tremendous meeting. And one night, the evangelists began to prophesy that God was going to bless people in our church. And there would be 17 people that would give a million dollars to the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you know what? I claim that in the name of the Lord. God's got money you never saw before. And he's got your name on it. God knows how to turn things around. God knows how to bring the money in. Are there any volunteers here that would be a volunteer for one of those 17? You know, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know what? I, I, I... You know, the devil's crowd can take this all wrong, but I believe that God wants to bless you. I believe that God wants to open up miraculous money, miracle money in the name of Jesus. You know, when Peter went fishing 
for some fish to pay his taxes. He didn't know those fish were going to have gold in their mouth. But God did. When Jesus said, cast your nets on the other side of the boat, he knew where the fish were. If he'd been a carpenter, he said, go over here and buy this property. There's going to be a new highway that goes right through there, and that land's going to be worth millions of dollars. God knows where the money is. And I want to pray that God will bless you today, that God will cause you to become wealthy, that God would enable you to do things with your money for the work of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be wonderful one day to stand before the Lord and the Lord said, you know, I, I sent that money into your hands and you took it and you helped build this hospital over here and you built this orphanage over here and you helped uh, build a church over here in Africa and you helped spread the gospel and I want to show you the fruits of your labor. I believe God wants to do that and God's looking for people to do it. Lift your right hand in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak a supernatural anointing. Just like there's an anointing to prophesy, just like there's an anointing to heal the sick, Lord, there is an anointing to make money and to prosper, and I loose that in the name of Jesus. Father, I loose the energy and the anointing and the know-how and the favor of God to fall upon people. Now, Lord, change the professions of some here that are in, in positions where they could never make money in that job, put them in the right job. Open the right doors. Close the wrong doors. Let their property become valuable. Let oil be found on, their, on, their, on those farms. And in Jesus' name, I speak inheritances to come for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to reach over and join the hand of someone next to you. And I want you to tell them that you love them. Would you do that? Say, I love you in the name of Jesus. And I want us all to pray this prayer together. So, Lord Jesus, this is a month of miracles. This is a month of breakthroughs. And I ask in Jesus' name that you take out of me anything that would hinder my prayers from being answered. Lord, if there's unforgiveness or hurt feelings or things I've never gotten over, Lord, remove it. Heal it. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. May there be a new anointing upon my life to love people and to pray for people. Now bless those on either side of me. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. May faith rise in their hearts. And may this be a month where nothing's impossible. We accomplish what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. How many meant that prayer? Hold your hand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, I asked you to write down your three greatest needs and put them in your shoe. And every day, proclaim the miracles to happen. Every day, it may be 20 times a day, it may be 50 times a day, you speak the salvation of your family. You speak God's opening the doors of blessing. God's healing you, whatever those needs are. But I want to encourage you to do this. If you change shoes... Take that prayer request out and put it in another shoe. I, I had uh, my prayer request in a pair of tennis shoes. And I went in to get some more tennis shoes. And I, and I had these uh, inserts. I took those inserts out and my prayer request fell out there on the ground. I said, what's that all? I said, oh, it's, it's, it's a note to remind me some things. <laughs> and I put it in these new shoes. But if you'll do that, it's not that that's magical or anything, but it's, it's just a step of faith. And sometimes God asks us to do things that doesn't mean anything to anybody else, but it means something to you. 
One time, uh, uh, the Lord spoke to my dad to quit reading the funny paper. And uh, I said, well, I said, that's crazy. I, I've never heard anything so stupid in all my life. He said, well, he said, what happened? I would get the paper, and I'd read the funny paper before I'd read the Bible. And he said, it, it, just, it just was something that I just felt like God spoke to me, that I was to put him first. And just give that to the Lord. And sometimes God will tell you to do things that are silly to other people, but they're not silly to you. And you, if you do it as under the Lord, God will honor you for it. Hallelujah. Well, uh, we're going to go out of here with a shout. And before we do, I want to say that next, this next month, we're having the CGI conference. And... Uh, Many times when people see that CGI conference, they think, well, that's just for people being ordained. But actually, it's a fall revival. It's the, we're calling it the fall fire. Fire, no, fire fall. I forgot what we're calling it. Fall fire, I think. So is that what we're calling it, fall fire? But uh, we are having some of the greatest men of God here in that week span as we can, as I know of any place in the world. And they have anointings on their life and impartations on their life. And I want you to be part of those meetings. And when they come, I want you to come to these meetings. We're going to, I want these people to lay hands on you. And I want them to lay hands on your kids. And uh, we're going to have an impartation night. And these, these guys are coming from all over the country. Nathan Morris will be here the last couple of nights. And... Uh, but it's going to be great. I'll tell you more about it. It'll be uh, the 15th of September. And so let's just believe God for some great things to happen. Amen. Amen. Let's go out of here with a shout. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. God bless you.